Hey! This episode was a pain! <laughs> this is uh, the uh, the Christmas special, the season finale for uh, season 4 of Scott the Waz. This is episode 195. It's uh, You're Not an RPG Guy, a Scott the Waz Christmas. So, alright, let's talk about this one. So, uh, pretty much, uh, season 4 was meant to end with episode 200. I wanted it to, you know, like, seasons 1 through 3... All had 50 episodes each. So season four was looking to be like this, this, um, you know, like the, the end of it was going to be episode 200. I wanted it to be something like, you know, like it was like how it's awesome. Baby was the end of ep season two, you know, like just have the 200th episode as the end of the season. Uh, 2020 was a very, like, it, it was a year where I wanted to put more and more effort into the videos and I wanted to make them bigger and bigger and bigger. And, um, you know, just keep, just keep piling uh, onto them, where it's just like, you got stuff like, you know, the Dark Age of Nintendo, and then you had stuff like The Trial, and it opened with anime games, and then you had, um, stuff like Memory Cards, and Personal Trainer Cooking, and Speed Dating, and all this junk, where it's just like, episodes were getting longer, and, you know, they incorporated more and more people, and, you know, episodes that, you know, just like, were just in the middle of the season, had, you know, specific music made for it and, and whatnot, and, um, you know, it was, it was getting more and more, just more and more junk, and, um, you know, by the time that the, uh, the Chibi Robo Ziplash episode came out, I said, I'm gonna take a break, uh, just like a, a month off or something, uh, during August, uh, and I, I worked on Borderline Forever during that time, which is the 200th episode, um, and, you know, I was chipping away at it. I mainly worked on the opening, the opening credits during that time, mainly, like, the, the animation during the opening credits, like, the blue border kind of coming in, and I started talking to Garrett and Nick about, about music for that, and, uh, throughout that time, I realized, like, I did the math, and, you know, I, 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 I planned out the year ahead, and I thought, like, there is no way I'm gonna get this done in time. Not only is it, like, not only am I, 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 am I like, I don't think I'm going to make it to 200 episodes by the end of the year. I don't think I can possibly do this episode based on my, my vision for it within that period of time. Like, especially if I, if I have to do all these other episodes, like, you know, I was like, okay, I can get to like 45 episodes. Um, so that pretty much meant like, okay, like if I would want to get to episode 200 by the end of the year, that means like I'd have to do five bonus episodes throughout the week so not only would i have to do five bonus episodes but then i would have to be working on borderline throughout forever throughout that entire period of time in the background and i was like that that isn't gonna happen um i look back at stuff like like madden at christmas and it's awesome baby and i think like how did i do that like i i have no idea how i did that and i look back at them and i and then i think like well i rewatch them and then i realize like okay these are far more like, these, these are far simpler than this stuff is. Like, you know, like, so much of It's Awesome Baby just takes place in, you know, my office and it's just the guys talking. Or, you know, so much of Madanoi Christmas is just, you know, Madden, the Madanoi review and then me at the desk, just talking to the desk. And, you know, something like, uh, you know, Borderline Forever just has so much junk going on in it. And even something like this, it's, it's just a full blown, like Scott, the Waz episode. Like it's just a full, like 22 minute Scott, the Waz episode about RPGs. And then, you know, like 13 minutes of it is like a, a full on like skit with animation and music and all that stuff. Um, you know, like, it's just like, it was a miracle that I got this done in time itself uh so but either way like during that break time i realized like i'm not gonna get to episode 200 so i realized like you know my initial plan was to just do like a christmas special in the vein of what i did for season two season two didn't have like a full big bad christmas special it was it was uh the collector's editions episode was supposed to be like just like the replay it was just supposed to be like hey this is just a normal scott the Waz episode but it does have a christmas theme so there you go. And then the week after that, you got It's Awesome Baby. Because I didn't want It's Awesome Baby to have a Christmas theme. I wanted that to just be a general episode because it was the 100th episode. So, you know, I made I made the Christmas special it just happen before it. And it was just kind of a simple episode. Um, so that was kind of the initial plan this year. Um, but then I kind of came down to the idea that it's just like, I don't think I, like, 
I, I was just like, I'm not going to be able to do, you know, Borderline Forever this year. So why don't I just do a very, a big, you know, fun Christmas special along the lines of a very mad annoying Christmas and it's a bargain bin Christmas. Um, and that's the end of the year. And then, you know, at the beginning of season five, you get Borderline Forever. And I'm kind of like, that's a win-win for people who like kind of the bigger projects. Um, because it's just like, you know, there you go. You get two. You get two when you would have only re- originally only gotten one. And you probably would have gotten like five rushed episodes just to just to meet a quota that is just pretty much set by me. Just the idea that, oh, it has to, you have to have 50 episodes per season. Um, you know, so I thought like, okay, like maybe I should do a big Christmas special. And I was talking to like Sam and Eric. I think we were just getting food one time and I was just like, you know, I kind of want to, you know, like I need to think of like what I want to do for this Christmas special because I've, I've, I've accepted the fact that I'm not going to get to borderline forever this year. And like, I, I, I remember an idea. I remembered an idea that I had that I wrote down where I was just like a video about why I don't like RPGs because that was a running gag with Scott the Waz is just the fact that I don't play a lot of RPGs. I'm not, you know, like, oh, because I'm not an RPG guy. Oh, I'm not a blank guy. I'm not a blank guy. I'm not a blank guy. You know, like, I'd always say that kind of stuff when I didn't really care about something. Um, And one thing that a lot of people have always been, like, just like, oh, man, you know, Scott just keeps saying, you know, he's just not interested in all this stuff. He just likes stupid-ass Pac-Man or whatever. Um, And... You know, we kind of talked about just like, oh, yeah, I had this idea for like the fact that like I don't like RPGs or something. I think like I think Eric brought up the idea that it's just like, oh, yeah, you know, we all get you like Xenoblade Chronicles for like uh, Christmas. And I was just like, oh, yeah, yeah. And it's just like just like uh, thinking it's just like, oh, man, like you're not an RPG. You know, it's just like the Christmas trope of like something like like a Charlie Brown special would be like. You know, like, they go, like, Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown. Like, you're not an RPG guy, Scott DeWise. <laughs> so, uh, I was like, boom, there we go. I, I came up with the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the title and the, the premise right there, uh, with help from, like, Sam and Eric, uh, called, you're not an RPG guy, it's Scott DeWise Christmas. And I was like, all right, there we go. I got that done. <laughs> so, I just, like, I at least have the idea for the, uh, for the Christmas special. Um. And throughout season four, like, I was just kind of, like, a lot of it, I was just, like, I was just, like, going to the last minute just working on these episodes. I'm always pretty much doing that, uh, working towards the last minute on these episodes. And, um, you know, so, like, I wasn't able to start work on You're Not an RPG Guy until probably, like, it might have been November, like... And usually, like, a lot of this stuff, like, a lot of these bigger projects, I'm at least starting discussions around, like, summertime, September, around then. And, like, I remember It's a Bargain Bin Christmas. The, the first major thing I, I really remember doing was uh, was talking to Garrett about uh, the song It's a Bargain Bin Christmas around, like, September time. And, uh, you know, I didn't really get started on a lot of this stuff until November because, like, I was juggling so much stuff when it came to not only, like, planning Borderline Forever, but also working on, um, like, the charity event for that year. Just working on, like, the product designs and, and uh, managing all that with uh, with the Pixel Empire. So, I was just juggling so much junk with, with this year at the end of the year. And, you know, around November, I was like, alright, I gotta start work on... Uh, you're not an RPG guy. And, uh, you know, I start talking to like, you know, like, you know, Nico, who, what up Nico, who does a lot of the logos, um, that I, that I do, uh, that, that I use. And I was like, Hey, you know, I'm working on this. Um, can you get like a logo for me? Uh, so that got started. And then I start talking to Nick and I just think like, okay, like let's do, you know, like I start talking to Nick, Nicholas Carr, who does, you know, the, the score for these episodes and he did the, the intro music. And I was like, Hey, let's do something really cool. You know, it was kind of like a precursor to borderline forever, which had fully orchestrated music for at, at least the vocal songs like that. That music was all like orchestrated, which is amazing. Like that's such like a big, like, Oh man, this is a big step. Um, and I was like, Hey, like, would you mind, like, let's use actual instruments if we can. Um, and he was like, he was super down for that. And, you know, that, that's, that's what I always love about, you know, the people that I work with, you know, like Nick and Garrett and, and, um, Nico and, 
and uh, all the animators, Emily and AD and you know everybody who's who did stuff for this for this special. You know, even the, all the two D animators too, because you know they did all the art that was incorporated in the stop motion. Um, you know, they are all so just open to just doing just what you know it's just like oh yeah let's do that you know take it a step above and it's it's always super fun um but we thought about that and i kind of thought this idea of like hey let's do something along the lines of the uh the the, the end credits theme of super mario 3d world for the opening credits um and you know that's why a lot of people think it's just like oh yeah that sounds a lot like mario 3d world is because like well, mario 3d world is is mostly jazz big band music and uh you know that's what that's what nick did he did a big band jazz theme that you know kind of fell into uh to breakout um and uh you know like it also had its own kind of like it's its own tune that is a light motif used later in the episode which i thought is, is really fun i i love light motifs in work um that's why you hear breakout so much in these uh even if it's from another game um it's from 3d dot game heroes um just just having that light motif for like oh a big moment in this special is you know right here um and it is coming up here another big moment is the why uh, uh why won't you play them um music video portion i guess um and uh i i decided to keep kind of like this aesthetic of the paper cutout aesthetic kind of like that car uh that construction paper aesthetic because that was the aesthetic of the opening and i wanted it to kind of permeate throughout the special so like you even have little title cards throughout the special that are on like construction paper and whatnot and and i and i want that to be the case and it was something where like i had the idea to have everything be kind of a paper cutout look before i realized like oh that's also like a uh <laughs> that's also um that's 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 paper mario it looks like paper mario it's why don't you play them i'm sorry i keep on i i'm always like i i i keep on saying why won't you and why don't you um but um you know i had this idea for the paper cutout aesthetic for the opening mainly because uh you know i wanted to do something different from it's a bargain Man christmas which had the um the uh the uh storybook opening and i wanted to do something different from that um, but I've already done, we've already done, like, stop motion in the sense of, like, you know, Matter No Christmas has, you know, had the stop motion segment, uh, as the opening. And, uh, Bargain Bin Christmas had kind of that storybook style. And I thought, like, okay, what else can we do here? Um, so, you know, I, I, I put out, like, a call for, like, you know, animators, stop motion animators, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, that's how I met Emily, uh, Emily, uh, Wolver who did the uh the the logo animation at the very beginning pretty much like where it says scott wozniak presents um you're not an rpg guy and then you know that that's all her and uh, i met her through that and you know the first thing i had her do was the um the scott the Woz logo that you see in borderline forever she did that and that was like one of the other first things that happened with that with that special and uh you know like when when it came time for this i thought like okay she is awesome and, and all of this like i'm gonna ask her if she wants to do like the uh, you know the opening animation for uh, you're not an rpg guy and and uh you know she she was like i you know like she her schedule was packed um and she only had enough time to do like that title sequence um and she directed me towards 80 who like knocked it out of the park um pretty much my thought process was like how can i do like a really cool unique opening credit segment um that is not as time consuming as other ones you know like if it was like all fully animated like with like you know like clay models or, or whatever and i thought like hmm well why don't i do paper cutouts where not only can i incorporate other 2d animators um because i love doing that i love having as many different people work on this as possible where it's just you have all these 2d animators um do stuff and you know that makes us then like oh man you know like i can get the 2d animators to do the paper cutouts and it's it's not as time consuming on their end because they're paper cutouts so like they're gonna have jaggy movement like it's it's gonna be like only like a couple frames each so that's gonna be a little simpler uh, for them compared to like, you know, something like it's a barring Christmas, which had like full blown, like, you know, like very fluid animation, uh, uh from everybody. This is going to be like a lot more like, oh, you know, just, a you know, three frames each or so, you know, it wasn't always the case, but you know, a lot of these were just like very simple, like, oh yeah, you know, just a couple of frames each. Um, 
and then on top of that, you know, like somebody like eighty wouldn't have to do much. Uh, I mean, she had to, she she did a lot. I, I mainly like wouldn't have to do much in terms of like creating the characters herself. Like you know, like it was just like, hey, here's all of it herself. But she still just w worked so hard. Just the behind the scenes photos that she sent me were incredible just so elaborate and she did so much stuff that i i wasn't expecting where it was like you know she made a miniature version of the desk that was like pretty much like just like everything every little detail was there and then she made like you know the garage from a very mad annoying christmas where it was like you know like it was like this miniature set of that and it looked perfect and the same goes for like you know the charity gala uh gala for uh bargain bin christmas and you know all that stuff it was incredible it was honestly incredible and i love the uh the portion that was based on the uh the stop motion segment uh from very mad annoying christmas i love the uh, the concept that we did uh a stop motion paper cutout segment that was based on the stop motion segment from a very mad annoying christmas um but yeah like I, I pretty much like did all these you know i i i came up with like the animatic and then i sent that to 80 and i sent that to all the other animators who did the 2d art um and i thought like i, I was very very pleased with the fact that like uh you know this was like a uh a, I, I thought it was a very clever idea to make something that looked genuinely really really cool and unique um you know, just like having an aesthetic that was like, oh, this is an aesthetic that's really cool, but you know, something that was a bit more time. You know, it it, it was very much like, hey, you know, we're taking time into a consideration here, into consideration here. We only have a month and a half to do this, so let's do this in a way that's still really cool, but it can be done quickly. Um, so that that was, you know, I I was very happy with that. Um, and then we had the, uh, the song segment, which was, uh, why don't you play them, which Garrett did. And that was another one where I was just like, Hey, let's, let's do a lot of like live instruments with this. Um, and you know, that, that song came out fantastic. It came out wonderfully. You know, it's, it's obviously inspired by, you know, something along the lines of persona five, uh, you know, like more so the music that is inspired that, that inspired persona five. Um, but yeah, like I, I thought, like that was such a standout moment in the um, in the special, um, and you know the the rest of the special is pretty much a basic Scott the Waz episode. Not not basic, you know, it's still very elaborate. But the uh, you know one thing that I wanted to do because you notice that in it's a bargain bin Christmas, the review portion of that, like the voiceover portion, is literally like you know, five minutes long. Um, this one is like it's. It's a legitimate Scott the Waz episode. And, you know, not, not that every single special episode needs to have that. Because Borderline Forever also had, like, a legitimate full Scott the Waz episode in that. Like, a general episode of, like, just voiceover. Because, like, part of me was, like, I want to make sure that the people that like the skits have that. But then also, like, you get just a full-blown episode here. You get just a full-blown, like, if I just released this on its own, it would have sufficed. Um... And that was really important to me. I, I wanted to do something where you still got that that um you know that review portion, and you got something that could stand on its own as just a full blown just like hey you know like this is a Scott the Waz episode, and there is something to it. It's not just <laughs> it's it's not just um you know a uh, a uh, you know skit with just like a five minute review is just kind of an intro or something. Um, but I also wanted to do the skit portion right, and, you know, I was still very, uh, you know, I, I think it came out quite well. All my scenes were done separately, you know, whenever I, they could have been. Uh, but we, like, I, I was, I was cramming so much into this day where we were doing, um, we did this right alongside the speed dating episode. Uh, these were all done on, th those were both done on the exact same day. And I remember, like, I had to run to the, to the store to grab some stuff for this special. And, uh, you know, like, we, we showed up and we were even late to, back to my own apartment where, uh, you know, the other guys were waiting there. It's just like, oh, we've been waiting here for a couple minutes. Um, but, you know, everybody, everybody showed up and, uh, you know, we, we got it done, you know. Uh, we were there pretty late, like, probably till two. But, uh, it, it was all done very, you know, very efficiently. Um, I, I think like something that made it 
uh, easier was like uh, speed dating was done on multiple cameras. It was done on two, uh, which made it way easier to do like you know the scenes with um, you know when it cut back between between one person and the other. Um, that made it way simpler. Just so then like uh, we didn't have to just keep on thinking like. All right, like, what's the context of the scene? What, uh, you know, like, did we already film this? Did we already film that? You know, we could just be like, hey, let's just get everybody's lines out of the way, all in order, right now. Um, and, you know, we did all that. And then on top of that, you know, we did uh, uh, RPG Guy. And, uh, you know, we were just basically like, yeah, let's just, uh, let's just throw a bunch of, you know, wrapping paper on the wall. Uh I think I think one thing that we probably could have done a little more is just kind of incorporate more of a Christmas theme. I think it's okay enough, but uh, you know, like that's that's the thing. As a Christmas special, like there's not a ton of Christmas in it. Um, however, like Madden Away Christmas was kind of like that, where it's just like it was not really Christmas theme. <laughs> like there there was not much Christmas going on there. It was pretty much that the environment was Christmas. Um, and then Bargain Bin Christmas was a bit more Christmas oriented, though it was, you didn't have to make it, like it, it was something where it's just like Christmas was not a massive, like, plot element of it. It was something where it's just like, this was just kind of like a regular episode, but it takes place during Christmas. Um, but, it, you know, like this, this was definitely like probably like one of the lesser Christmas oriented ones, but I still think it does feel genuinely like, like a Christmas special, and, you know, I like that for it, um, but, you know, near the end, we also have, uh, you know, I, I, I wasn't planning to do anything major with this one, like, in terms of, like, oh, yeah, let's have, you know, like, a bunch of cameos, like, like, and it's awesome, baby, or eventually with Borderline Forever, but, like, I thought, um, you know, uh, Video Game Donkey would be a good one to do, like, I randomly thought about that while I was making this episode, and I thought, like, you know, like, I knew that Donkey was not, he did not really care for a lot of RPGs. Um, so I sent an email on a whim, just, like, not expecting anything. But, uh, yeah, it turns out, uh, uh, Donkey's, Donkey's wife, Leah, uh, responded. And, uh, this was during when he was, uh, doing his daily uploads. So he was a bit busy with that. But, uh, he made time for, uh, for this. And I'm very, 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 very thankful for that. And, uh, you know, I, um... I didn't know if he liked me or not, uh, based on, he did a, he did a tier list on, uh, on YouTubers and he put me at the, he put me in, uh, he put me in Z tier and, uh, I did not know. I was just like, okay, I think he's okay with me. I'm not sure though. Uh, so, uh, but then eventually he made another video talking about, uh, YouTubers or, or at least like this was like when he was doing his, uh, his daily upload schedule, making fun of. Uh, trending t uh, t content on YouTube, how a lot of the trending content is not content that, you know, is necessarily like the content to be proud of. It's very much like very simple stuff that's just, you know, just like, you know, it, it appeals to like the lowest common denominator. Um, and uh, he mentioned me in like a group of like uh, channels that he thought made like very good content and i was just like well th thank you <laughs> like i'm very i was like this is like that's very very uh very nice and i was very thankful for that so um i was like hey maybe i can get him in the special so uh i emailed him and uh yeah he got me his uh, lines back uh and they, they were great i thought it was like a really cool like bonus moment where it's just like I, it's something where like every 10 minutes in this special like something happens where i thought i i think i saw like the premiere chat was like what yeah 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 that's great <laughs> you know um and i was like that i'm i was very happy with that um and uh another weird thing with this is how sam wasn't in it that much uh he wasn't in speed dating and he was barely in this one it was mainly because like we didn't know if he would be able to make the shooting for this because uh, he had other stuff going on so we were just kind of like like we were like okay you know i'm gonna cut him out because like a lot of um because like uh justin who plays uh geriatrics the therapist uh he uh you know he 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 has never really been a part of like that that core group that was in like it's a bargain bin christmas he was a newer character so um you know i was like hey i'll incorporate him in uh rpg guy um but uh we're speed dating i was originally planning for uh for sam who plays a uh, jeb jab uh to be to be the uh, other guy in that 
but uh, I didn't know if Sam was going to make it. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to actually rewrite this and have uh, have Justin be in here. And um, I pretty much had like RPG guy just focused around uh, the other guys. Um, but then I was like, well, Sam has to be in it because like, it is Sam. So, uh, you know, like I, I made it sound like, Hey, we'll have him be a mailman. Uh, so, uh, that was a way to get around it. So that's why he wasn't in speed dating. I, I wasn't sure he was there during the filming of it. Like we just weren't sure if he was going to be able to make it. So, uh, that was something where, uh, you know, he was, he was there during the entire time during speed dating, but he wasn't in the video itself because he wasn't written in the video because we didn't know or i didn't know because i wrote the video and i had to plan all this but um you know uh, that, that's why he was kind of like a you know kind of a, a more minor part of a of a rpg guy but uh i'm very happy that i got this done in time this was something that you know uh this came out on a wednesday i believe so speed dating came out on the sunday and i'm very much like damn like how did i do that <laughs> in this amount of time where it's just like i i had to finish writing rpg guy and the speed dating episode like right before and like i was i was i was like right until the very end like i was working on those until like people were showing up that night to film and uh it's it's really impressive to me that uh i was able to do that uh, so I, I'm, I'm always very happy that I'm able to do this kind of stuff, but it's always like, I look back at it and I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, how was I able to do that in this amount of time? Um, but you know, again, like I was, I, I was very, very proud of how this came out. Um, I think like in the grand scheme of the Christmas specials, um, I think, I think it's a bargain bin Christmas has like the, just the core, like, I really like how that story plays out and how everything kind of like weaves into each other. Um, yeah, I really like that. I think as a standard Scott the Waz episode, I think RPG guy is a lot more just fully fleshed out in terms of like I feel like there's more for everybody to enjoy here, where like you have the skit and then you have you have the you know the skit portions. I, I don't consider them skits because like I don't know like I I feel like skits are more so like kind of like I don't know when I when I think that I think like Saturday Night Live just kind of like oh let's just go on a tangent here let's just have a five minute cutaway where nothing happens and it's just based on a slight joke. That was made um you know in the video uh this is more so like you know this is kind of like interweaving like a story where it's like you know like the the rpg um review segments are supposed to be like that that's what scott is saying when like they're asking him like you know like hey why don't you like rpgs and, and whatnot um and uh you know like it's supposed to be like you know this is all happening at once and you know this portion is supposed to be like scott's in you know, his, his game room or his office, whatever you want to call it. And, um, you know, he's talking to himself about, like, maybe why RPGs uh, might be okay or, like, why, you know, you know, he's starting to kind of, like, be okay with RPGs. And, you know, I, I think it still, like, holds up in that regard. Um, I think Bargain Bend Christmas is probably, like, the better, like, overall, like, structured just story kind of thing, where this is, like, a better, like, hey, this is just, this is a big Scott the Waz episode that, you know, kind of appeals to both camps of, like, people who like the characters and, and you know, the jokes and, and all that stuff. Um, but then you also want just a genuine review kind of episode type thing. And uh, I, I think the best episodes in terms of, like, you know, the general video game stuff are, are the ones that kind of get the viewer to just kind of, like, think themselves about, like, their stance on things and just kind of think about, like, you know, just kind of think it's just like, am, you know, like, what what kind of RPG guy am I, you know, or it's just like, what kind of video game guy am I? Do I like RPGs and, you know, is Scott's points stupid or not? You know, that's the thing. I, I 100% admit, like, a lot of my points are stupid. Uh, you know, I, I would not say my opinion it should be taken fully seriously, but everything here is literally like that. That is why I don't really care for RPGs, though. You know, like it's very much at the end. It's supposed to be kind of like, hey, don't. It doesn't matter what other people. If other people don't like RPGs, who cares? It's just like they're validated just as much as you're validated for not liking something else. You know, it's just like you know, at the end of the day, you know, that's that's how it is. Um, and. I think it really did work well as just a finale and a cap off to the year. 
and uh, just to just to make things even cooler, like, I was I was very excited to have T Lopes do the uh, the the ending song. Uh, he was awesome to work with. Um, you know, it, it was fantastic to have him be a part of it and to uh, just have like his just be a part of of the uh, the projects that I made. It's just it, every single one of these special projects just working with somebody new every time that is somebody that i was like i i would have never expected to work with this person but i'm really happy that i am it's just like it's it's exciting and it's really just like like wow like i i can do this kind of stuff you know and it, it's it's incredible and um you know I'm, I'm very very thankful for all the people that contributed to you know this episode uh whether it's you know nick and uh all the uh all the people that worked with him in terms of you know the live the live uh you know music players uh garrett and uh all the people that worked with him to do uh why don't you play them uh all the animators like they they all did phenomenal in this episode just like you know in pretty much any episode that i've worked with animators in they all they all do such wonderful work and uh you know just uh everybody emily 80 um all the 2d animators they did phenomenal nico who did the great logo donkey for uh lending his voice um it was all awesome i like how this scene came out too uh that was a pretty good that, that looks pretty good um i thought uh you know i pretty much wanted to make it like kind of like oh it's in this dark location but uh you know i wanted it to be basically like it looks very 3d ish um and i was i was pretty i was pretty happy with that um it was just a green screen and then uh pretty much just uh me just kind of distorting uh gray squares and putting a lot of vignettes and stuff on there and then putting a drop shadow on me and whatnot i thought i thought that all came out really really well but uh t t knocked it out of the park uh donkey uh his uh <laughs> uh he uh he he followed all my lines perfectly um but i told him to ad lib the uh, the ogre battle uh 64 <laughs> line as in like i just thought it's just like hey just like if you can come up with a funny RPG name, I think I just put like Final Fantasy VIII there. Like I was just like, because like it gets to a point where like when you work on a lot of this stuff, um, that like you just like, you you just get nothing. You, you you have you have no idea what to say for like when you're writing sometimes. So it's just like uh, I don't know, like uh, for, you know, like oh, Final Fantasy VIII. Uh, it's just like whatever that that works. It's just like, and I told him it's just like yeah if you just want to ad lib like a funny sound and rpg name uh, and he picked ogre battle 64 um but yeah i think uh i think this all came out great and i and i love um nick's light motif here of using the um the the opening the opening credits music i think this piece sounds fantastic i think i think it sound it's just like this perfect emotional piano uh rendition of the opening credits theme during the uh the the moral <laughs> the moral of the story uh i love it and uh at the end in the credits i do um i i, I did something that i did want to do before i wanted to do like hey uh what if i do like these sketches or these animations or something of moments throughout like the series or the uh the um the uh the, uh, the season and uh, I did that all like, <laughs> like the night before the video, the the episode premiered. It's just like sketching out like moments throughout the season where you have like a moment based on Dark Age of Nintendo, and you have a moment based on like the trial and um, anime games and stuff like that. And uh, that kind of uh, gave me the uh, the thought on doing that for uh, Borderline Forever, but instead it was it was based on the entire series and uh, having um, different two D animators do that because I didn't have two D animators. I, I didn't have anything that 2d animators could really do much um in the rest of borderline forever and i was like i i love 2d i love incorporating 2d animation in these specials so it's just like oh incorporating them in the credits um and i also thought it was fun i i came up with the idea to have hey all scott here be at the very end of this episode um the uh, uh the cheaper of a ziplash episode already had a very long wait until hey all scott here was said um in that one and uh, I, I just thought, like, uh, I, I wrote down in my notes, like, when I was working on this, I was just like, oh, put hey all at the end. Because I realized, like, as I was writing this episode that, like, I never said it. <laughs> I never said it at the beginning. And I was just like, oh, that would be a really, really cool thing. Because since hey all Scott here said at the beginning of pretty much most Scott the Waz episodes, just having it at the end, I thought was, um, was just a really fun idea. I was just like, I really like doing that. 
Um, and for the credits, I originally wanted the credits to be at an angle. I wanted it to be like whenever they would uh, they would scroll like this. I thought it would have been cool to have them kind of go from one corner, like the, the bottom uh, left-hand corner, and scroll to the top right-hand corner instead of being like regular credits here. Um, when I did that, I realized like they were kind of hard to read. <laughs> so I was like, that would have been, that was the original plan. I was just like, that would have been really cool. Um, but it didn't work very well. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I did all these, like, pretty much the night before. Um, but overall, uh, I'm very proud of this episode. I think it, I think it came out really well, uh, especially considering the time crunch and, and not necessarily knowing what I was going to do, like, whatever, uh, you know, like, three months prior. But, uh, I think it all worked out fantastic. I, I was, I was very happy with how it came, uh, came out. And, uh, pretty much, like, it, it's something where it's just, like, you know, this, I, I was very happy with this kind of adding to the, uh, the legacy of the, uh, the Scott the Watch special episodes.